Well, not according to plan in this case. The Dallas Mavericks fall at home to the Boston Celtics, 109-106, behind Kimball Walker's 32 points, five boards, three assists. Uh, pretty much Boston's big three. I know they were without Smart and they were without uh, Hayward, but you know what? They got a lot of production still. They got 24 out of Tatum, and I know he was cold as ice and not in the good way back in Boston when they played. I think he was 1 of 15 shooting in that game. Much better for him this game. Much better bounce back for him. He was a factor. Kimball Walker basically did exactly what he did last time to the Mavericks. And uh, for the people who weren't a super on-board fan with the idea of adding Kimball Walker to Dallas in free agency, I don't get it. Like, I get I get that it would take the ball out of Luka's hands a bit, but Boston's got a lot of guys that need to eat too, and he's still thriving there, it looks like. So, yeah, in this case, Jason Tatum in this game, much better. 10 of 23, not a great game, but still 24 and 8. Uh, only 2 of 10 on threes. That's what brought down his percentage for the most part. Uh, and then, yeah, Jalen Brown, 26 and 9 as well for him. So some of my stats up here on the board haven't been updated. Uh, I was typing this up in the final minute and then added the last headline. So a couple of these stats, not particularly spot on to my normal standard. So I'll tell you what, because I am a perfectionist in this regard, we're going to update on the fly right here. So in this game, the Mavericks came out pretty strong for the most part. KP working again early on. KP, another solid outing, I would say. I know he fouled out late and that sucked, but Dallas in the second half kind of came apart. And it's another one of those games where you saw the absent and necessary value of Luka Doncic. I know I don't want to harp on him too much. This was game two officially without Luka. I know he didn't play hardly at all in the Miami game, so in a way it was game three without him. But uh, in that, Luka received before the game the Western Conference Player of the Month back from November. That award, and so that was pretty cool. He was also taking some shots before the game uh, in warm-up as well, just shoot around with Mark Cuban before the game. Not much elevation or anything like that. In fact, I don't even think he ever got off of just kind of like raising up onto his toes, but still good to see him kind of working and exercising that ankle as he works his way back, and he didn't look hampered by it at all. So encouraging stuff there. But in this game, Dallas gets off to a nice early start, uh, even takes a, I believe, three-point lead into the half, and the problem is the third quarter where things come undone for the Mavericks. They scored just 18 points. Excuse me, they were up five at half, 55 to 50. In the third quarter, however, they scored just 18 points, and that flips the game on its head. They trail then by three going into the final frame. And uh, yeah, down the stretch, Kimball Walker, man, when you got a certified closer, it's going to show. Seth Curry had himself another big game, 20 points, came alive with a couple threes late in this game. I think he scored eight points down the final minute, minute and a half of this game to try and give Dallas a chance, but uh, they, they couldn't get it done. Dallas didn't have many turnovers in the game, I think just nine overall, but they had three of those nine in the final minute and a half, and that's what killed them. They had back-to-back, -back, not in the final minute and a half, but they had in the final few minutes three turnovers. Brunson with two of them gets ripped on one by Brown. Another one, he just throws it out of bounds. And then you have a travel called on uh, Seth Curry as he's trying to, I don't know what exactly, it looked like he was trying to jab step off uh, Tatum from him in that case in the corner. And he kind of shifts, he kind of staggers. It's unclear on if he actually dragged his pivot foot. Regardless, it's called a travel. That's another crucial turnover for Dallas. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't like ha having to complain about turnovers because Dallas had just one turnover in the first half. They end the game with seven officially recognized on uh, the box score that I'm seeing here. So, really good taking care of the ball. Boston is the third best team in the league taking care of the ball. Dallas is the first and in this case, it was a matchup of two three seeds between the East and the West. And just like the game in Boston, Dallas battled right there with them, but they faded late. I know the third quarter undermined Dallas. And then in the fourth quarter, they couldn't ever really get fully back in control. They got right there within striking distance a couple times. Chance to cut it to three, chance to cut it to four. And it just kept slipping away from them a little bit. So... 
it happens, man. It happens. It's this is a game where things are going to be rough when you're playing without your star, and it was rough for the championship team too. When they were without Dirk, they plummeted because they lost Dirk and Karan Butler. They had to play like 15 games without Dirk, and they plummeted from like a 24 and three start or whatever it was, 24 and six start to a. Um, I don't know exactly how far they fell before they got him back, but. They were not a good record through that 15-game stretch. And the thing was, they weren't really getting blown out too terribly much in that run. They were still learning and battling and improving as a team. And so, at the very least, you can look for that here a little bit for Dallas. Now in the game, Boston shoots 41% compared to 39% for Dallas. 32% from the line. Dallas shot actually 35% uh, better percentage there. The difference to me is at the foul line. Boston shot 90%, 27 of 30. Now, they had to go with a really small ball lineup here, but it worked for them very well. Dallas, meanwhile, shot 80% at the line, 20 of 25. To me, it's just that Boston got to the line more and connected on a higher percentage, obviously. So it wasn't a shockingly different uh, number of attempts between the two teams. Pretty even there for the most part. But it's just that Boston cashed in on those opportunities better. I think KP was 5 of 7 at the line. And I'm trying to remember, Brun, or, uh, Brokoff missed one late. Hey, shout out to Ryan Brokoff. Comes in and gets five points after KP fouls out. Very end of the game. He splashes a three, gets fouled on another three, and makes two of the three free throws. Had he made the last one, he would have cut it to a three-point game. Doesn't work out that way for Dallas. And Boston goes down. Uh, you know They're fouled, make the two free throws. Dallas uh, turns it over or misses their shot and... Pretty much that's it. That wraps up that game at that point. But uh, back to what I was doing here. Boston 15 turnovers. So Dallas actually made Boston turn it over pretty much with their season average. Dallas kept up the ball better. Their season average for the Mavericks on turnovers per game is about 12. They've been playing under that level a lot lately. So as a team, they're doing a great job protecting the ball. It's just in clutch moments, in those final moments right now where they're struggling a little bit, whether it's offensively or as was the case in Miami a little bit, and as was the case, I say in Miami, in the Miami game, or here, it's protecting the ball a little bit. Not many turnovers for the game, but when they're showing up in some cases is a little bit problematic for Jalen Brunson in particular. Uh, Dallas out assists the Celtics by 10 23 to 13. They are, however, however, out rebounded 54 to 42, including 14 boards offensively for the Celtics compared to 10 for the Mavericks. Glass work, ooh, Mavericks all day. 10 blocks for the Mavericks compared to four for Boston, seven steals compared to three. That number actually is a little bit surprising because you saw Brown and Tatum both getting after uh, the Mavericks guards there. And uh, fouls pretty much dead even. Celtics called for three technicals in this game. That's pretty crazy. Now, for the Mavericks, I mentioned KP earlier. This is a big minutes game for KP, 38 minutes. It's going to be interesting to see how Dallas adjusts his um, his workload moving forward a little bit. He's looking great out there. This is his fourth consecutive game with at least 20 points. First time he's done that this season. So he's finding a rhythm, 8 of 19 from the field, 2 of 7 from 3, uh, five of eight, excuse me, five of eight at the line. So four of the five misses from Dallas at the line were him. The other was Brokoff. Three blocks, uh, a steal as well. So, and 13 boards. Like, he basically is playing for the new version of what we're seeing at KP. He's not at his fully realized potential yet for this new KP Unicorn 2.0 kind of model we're working with here. But his production here, I don't know how much higher you're going to see it step up right now and like and when i say right now i'm talking about like in this short stretch while luca's out because it sounds like luca could be out depending on who you listen to it could be maybe a couple more games and he's back by pretty much right after christmas or it could be the start of the new year it sounds like he's closer than the initial reports had us fearing so that's great news as well with that being the case kp is stepping up but you do have to keep in mind he's taking on a greater workload and right now he's he's rising to the occasion he's not quite recaptured form yet but it looks like another sizable step in the right direction which is great uh, I would have liked to have seen him get some more touches in that second half I know he had I think it was 
I'm trying to remember what his points were at half. Let me refer to that. I actually had that pulled up here. Uh, at half, KP had 13 and 9 at half. So his rebounds were really slowed down, only three boards in the second half. So, hey, if we want to look at something to work on a little bit for KP there, there's something there. Now, I know he dealt with some foul trouble. Obviously, he fouls out in the game. But, yeah, about 10 more points and three boards is what he got in the second half. Did get two more of his blocks. That's pretty sweet. And uh, it looks like his percentage did pretty much stay about even with what he was doing in the in the first half. So, yeah, I guess his touches were about the same. But this felt like a game where you needed more out of him. And Curry started off hot. He had 12 points in the first half as well. And until his little flurry there at the end, where he scored eight points, like I mentioned, in the final three minutes, he did nothing else in the second half. He was very good for Dallas in the first half, disappeared in the third quarter and for most of the fourth quarter, and then he stepped back into the role and closed pretty strong for Dallas um, in that regard. So, yeah, this is this is a, a step, I think, overall in the right direction. Like, you have Curry stepping up now as the, as the Robin figure in this case to KP as Batman as we're having to do this, as we're doing this analogy, I guess. And... You got other guys stepping up and making some plays too. Hardaway, 13 points. Um, only 4 of 17 from the field, 3 of 10 from 3. He missed a couple great looks in the final few minutes that Dallas desperately, desperately needed. That's unfortunate, but you know what? It, it's it's what I said about him. I still stand by it. I still think he's regressing to the mean, to his average of what he has shown us throughout his career. Now, you can say... He can play a little bit above that level just because of the talent he's surrounded by now compared to what he had in New York, but I don't think it's going to be a huge thing. I still think if Dallas does make a trade, I know some people seeing the hot streak he went on were reluctant to even consider the idea of him being involved in a trade. I'm not about that because I still think I still think that uh, he's going to regress about to this level that we're seeing, and there's a place for it on the roster, but if it's a deal that makes sense and improves your team... You go for it. I, I, I would absolutely do that in that case. So I digress. Uh, for Dallas, not a whole lot else to talk about. I mean, you can talk about Jalen Brunson nearly getting a triple-double, 10 points, 7 boards, 11 assists. He shot 4 of 13 from the field, though, and 2 of 6 from 3. Uh, three turnovers, two of them coming on basically back-to-back -back possessions there late in the fourth quarter. Those both hurt. But, you know, it is what it is. He, he was named, actually, today the Sporting News NCAA basketball player of the decade wild success for him at Villanova obviously winning two national championships there uh, pretty much starting all but one game in his career I believe as well and shooting over 50% from the field in that regard I think he had something like 13 NCAA tournament wins I mean dude dude cleared house for that program so I get it, it it's, it's cool to see him get that honor and to know that I feel pretty good with him as a backup point guard in this league. I still, I'm still not a, obviously Luca plays point guard essentially for us now, so it doesn't really matter. But I've always maintained that as much as I like Brunson, I don't see him having as high of a ceiling. He's athletically a little bit limited in that regard, but there's still a lot of value in a player like that. I would like to have him around on the team for several years. And it's just one of those things where sometimes you have to ask a little bit much of him. And I think it, I think it has a negative impact. In some cases, he can step through and perform huge. I mean, he he did that in the in the game he dedicated to his late friend. I'm trying to remember exactly what game that was a few games ago. But uh, he, he came through in that regard, and it was huge for him. He made something like 14 shots consecutively over the course of two games in that, which is pretty sweet as well. But I, I think for the most part, he's a quality backup point guard. You can get a lot of production out of him, a lot of steady-handed uh, play and all that for your second unit, and a guy that you can still throw in there with Luka and all that, and allow Luka to play a little bit off the ball even. That's great. That's exactly the kind of thing he needs. But I still think there are times where, especially in a stretch like this, you might have to ask a little bit more from him for big roles here. 31 minutes. He's playing a lot more, obviously, in Luka's absence, and I think you're going to see some of those mistakes creep through. Some of that's just natural. You don't play as many minutes in that case like he had a stretch there for a while in the season where he wasn't getting a whole lot of burn he, he almost seemed like he was in Rick, uh, Rick's doghouse a little bit now that he's out of it that's great 
but you still have to see how he can respond to that. And you've seen some shaky moments there. I'm not, I'm not worried about it or anything like that, but you have seen some shaky moments in the clutch, which goes against the, the narrative of, you know, him being this, uh, highly experienced player and knowing how to win in the clutch. He does, but we also have to acknowledge he's had two games now where in these big moments, he's made some critical mistakes this one, not as bad. The Miami one was pretty brutal to me, but this one, not as bad. I know the turnovers when they hit, when they occurred with about three and a half minutes left were at a really bad time because Dallas was at that point just about to go down double digits, but it's still something that I think it just dug the hole just a little bit too deep for the team to dig out of at that point. So not going to harp on it too long. This is a, this is a tough loss, I think, for Dallas because it's another game where I feel they were right there. They were capable of winning it, just like I felt they were capable of winning the game in Boston. But it does not work out for them in the end. They lose the season series to the Celtics, 0-2. And uh, at the very least, you know you don't got to deal with Boston anymore this season. And (laughs) you don't have to deal with the Knicks, because that's two teams now in the Eastern Conference you were swept by. One of those, not surprising, really. The other, very surprising. The Celtics end their two-game losing streak. They improve to 18-7 and seven on the season. The Dallas Mavericks fall to 18-9, and nine, which I believe will drop them now to fourth in the Western Conference. Yep, fourth in the Western Conference. They have the uh, head-to-head with the Rockets and a better division record. So there you go. Rockets are the five seed. Uh, and in this case, the Mavericks, you know, they've scored quality wins this year. They're better. We know they're better on the road this year than they are at home. But the, the Knicks and the Celtics are those two road losses for the Mavericks this year. They've gone to Denver and won. They've won in LA. They've won, um, you know, in New Orleans and Houston. They've won all over the place. Obviously Milwaukee most recently, and they're better on the road. I don't know why that is. It's really weird because it's the polar opposite of what this team has been in recent years, particularly last year where they won nine games all of last year. Now they've won 10 games overall already on the road so we'll see but maybe maybe in that case a slightly lower playoff seating won't be the end of the world for the Mavericks because they do appear to be road warriors but we'll see man I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry about this game this is a learning experience for the team I think KP is showing great progress I think Curry is rounding into form about like the player I thought we were getting back when he first re-signed with Dallas uh Hardaway is basically being what Hardaway is and Bronson, he's continuing to be pretty steady, pretty solid, even-handed uh, guy in the middle, um, in the middle of this stretch run while we wait to get Luca back from injury. And he will have his moments as well. He'll have his moments where he steps up and makes big, big plays for this team. So that's gonna do it for my time, guys. I've been DDP. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, and until next time, remember: every legend was once a prospect. Peace. And my animation broke. Wait for it. Boom. Nailed it.